Hi everybody, it's Steph Mischuk with The Killer Video Store. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about how to become a web developer. So we're gonna work off this little article that I wrote. And uh, let's go to full screen. So I'm gonna read off of this and comment along the way as well. So uh, here we go. So the following article details the steps you need to become a web developer. This is a common question I get all the time. Uh, you are not alone. So the first thing you have to do, number one, is you have to learn to code. You need the skills before you can sell them. So I'm recording this in 2014, May 2014, just to give you context. Although for the next several years, I think this list I'm going to describe here is going to be, uh, it's going to be good. Uh, you need to learn the following technologies in this order. So first one, HTML, CSS, the first two rather, this is you know, this is pretty common stuff. This is the basic building blocks of every website. After that, you should learn a little bit of JavaScript. This is the programming language for the web browsers. And this is very important. It's used to create all kinds of effects in the websites. It's used to, um, uh, it's used to validate forms. It's used to communicate with the server. If you don't understand any of this, you will once you get into learning all this stuff. So let me just quickly get past JavaScript. Uh, right after that, you have HTML5 and CSS3. Now, these are the extensions or the latest versions of HTML and CSS. It really makes web browsers and web design and web development a lot of fun because you can do all kinds of cool things. For instance, with HTML5, you can directly embed into your web browser video and audio clips, whereas before you had to use a third party an outside player like a flash player for instance to do this not anymore with html5 and a whole bunch of other things you can do with html5 with css3 you can do all kinds of nice crazy effects and create rounded buttons all kinds of stuff that we used to only dream about even five years ago html5 css3 makes this happen and a lot of the times especially with the html5 stuff you need javascript to be able to access the html5 power that's why I mentioned JavaScript. Um, don't worry, you don't have to become an expert in all these different things. You just have to, a lot of times you just need a working knowledge. Anyway, right after that, you have jQuery. jQuery is the de facto, de facto standard JavaScript library. It's basically a collection of JavaScript, JavaScripts, you know, I'm trying to put this in terms that non-nerds would understand. It's basically a collection of stuff uh, but it allows you to do all kinds of crazy things, uh, like drop-down menus, and all kinds of other stuff. Again, I'm not here to give you a, a big description of all these technologies, just to give you a, a brief understanding of what you should learn. So anyway, jQuery is huge. It's used everywhere. Next, you have Twitter Bootstrap. Now, this may catch people by surprise. Now, what Twitter Bootstrap is, it's a, a framework. And a framework is basically just a collection of code. It's HTML, it's a CSS code, and it's JavaScript code. And the whole point of Twitter Bootstrap is to make it easy to create sites that are responsive. And sites that are responsive are sites that work on any device. They work on desktop computers, they work on iPads, iPhones, Android devices. You get the idea. So by using Twitter Bootstrap to create the, the framework for your site and then you can just work off of that. It really speeds up the process. It's very, very important. Um, yeah, so after Twitter Bootstrap, you have uh, PHP. You know what, before I get into that, you know, let me just escape out of here. I'm gonna show you what I mean about what Twitter Bootstrap can do for you. So I'm gonna launch. So now here's Studio Web. And you can see this is a, you see it's a flexible site. You see how I get smaller? You see how the, the photo here, this image gets smaller all of a sudden? Let me back it up. Bigger, smaller. You see how the fonts are changing? You see, there's all of this happening automatically. You notice the top menu here? See, so you have my top menu. Watch what happens when I get small enough. You see, it becomes a drop down list here. It kind of reminds you of the Chrome drop down list. And then if you get smaller, it gets smaller even again, it gets smaller again. And see, and this will work on any device. Now, this whole thing is made possible by Twitter Bootstrap. It does this pretty much automatically. So it really makes your life easy. I just wanted to give you a quick uh, demo on that one. 
So PHP. Now PHP is one of the server-side programming languages out there. There are a few competitors. There's Ruby, Python, Java, ASP.NET, C Sharp, and others. The reason I, I selected PHP as the server-side language is because it's by far the most popular and so many very important tools that we use in uh, modern web design development today uses PHP. WordPress is written in PHP. And there's tons of small businesses that use WordPress. So if they come to you, they want to modify their WordPress blog, knowing PHP is going to make your life easier. Joomla, Drupal, two other popular CMSs, again, written PHP. Many shopping carts are written in PHP, so you want to modify that. So knowing PHP is, um, I think, is critical. Now, the great thing about it is that with all programming languages, once you learn one, the rest will come much easier. So the competitor to PHP is Ruby, one of them, and it's Python. But once you know PHP, to jump over to Ruby won't be a big leap. But knowing PHP will open you up to lots and lots of jobs. That's my aim with this when you know, to become a web developer, I assume you want to get work as a web developer. So next, SQL and MySQL. Now, SQL is the language of databases, this structured query language. Again, I'm not trying to teach you all the technology here. This is it's more about what you need to do to become a web developer. Anyhow, so you need to learn SQL. Again, you don't have to be a, t a master of it, just the basics. And MySQL is the most popular uh, SQL database out there. There's, there's MySQL, there's SQL Server from uh, Microsoft, there's Oracle, and there's many others, Postgre, SQL. And these are all, okay, we'll stop there because I can go on forever. So basically, you have to learn SQL, you have to learn MySQL because these are two, uh, these are super common when you're creating database-driven websites. When you're developing websites, you're storing stuff in SQL databases, without a doubt. Finally, in terms of the technology, object-oriented PHP. You may have heard it as OOP, in PHP or PHP OOP. And it's a style programming. Object oriented programming is a style program, it's modern programming. And you see object oriented techniques, if you will. And that style programming is in Ruby, it's in Java, it's in Python, it's in PHP, it's in JavaScript. So it's a style program you're going to have to learn anyway. So there you go. So, so let me emphasize here to be, oh, go back, to be clear. You don't need to master all these things before, you, know, to, before you, you get into actually building stuff uh, commercially. And in fact, to get to steps two and three on this list, you just need the very basics. You just got to look at this list here as in the ultimate goal. This is what you're looking to do at the end of the day. So in fact, you could quickly move to step two once you have a good understanding of CSS and HTML in your belt. So once you get to CSS and HTML, you can move to step two. We'll get, that in, we'll get to that in a second. As you learn more though, as you learn more of this list of uh, technologies here, you will be able to take on more jobs simply because you're gonna have a greater variety of skills and your pay will go up because as you learn more, you become more valuable, become more experienced, you, be, you know, you know, more you learn, the more you earn. That's my, my little expression. So, okay, let's jump to number two. Start building your own mini projects. That's a big part of learning. So once you know your basic HTML and CSS, build a simple site. Start building simple sites. When you learn a little JavaScript, build another simple site, put some JavaScript in there. When you learn HTML5, start putting some HTML5, CSS3 in there, and so on, so on, so on. It's important that you start building little mini projects. Don't, don't start with a big project. Start with mini project because it's really important that you sort of start and finish something. So a mini project could be one or two page site, three page site, and so on. So you keep doing this until you start feeling very comfortable where you can build up little mini sites, little sites. You're comfortable with that. When you feel comfortable with that, then you can start talking to people, start talking to friends, family, acquaintances, anybody who may need a, a small website. And you do it for free. You do two to three freebie client sites and the reason you want to do that is you want to get the whole experience of dealing with somebody else, learning with somebody else, dealing with them, communicating with them. That's a big part of being a successful web developer is being able to manage your clients and so on. So let me give you some tips. When you're doing your freebie projects, you want to keep detailed records of the time you spend on these freebie clients. So for instance, you want to track how many hours in meetings and phone conversations, how many 
hours actually building their sites or web apps and how many revisions you had to make. This is going to come in very handy down the road when you're when you're bidding for contracts or you're trying to judge how long a certain job is going to take you. By writing this, keeping these records and doing this, your ability to judge the time to complete a project is going to get much, 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 much better. And I'm going to tell you, it's crucial when you're out there as a web developer, whether you're working on your own as a contractor or getting work, it's crucial you be able to uh, accurately or fairly accurately judge how long it takes you to do something. So it's an important part. Uh, number five, once uh, you've done a few freebie clients and uh, you're comfortable with the quality of the work, it's time to put up your own website. And you put up your own website so that you can refer to your people to your website, pr prospective clients, prospective uh, employers, and you know you can show off your work. So that's, uh, that's an important thing. So let me jump you know, a little out of context here. So do you need a certification or a degree to be a web developer? The short answer is no, uh, except for if you want to work for a larger company. You want to work for a Microsoft or a Google, you're going to need a degree at this point, although that's changing now, uh, slowly, slowly. Um, but if you're doing work for small businesses or you want to work for small companies, they hardly if I've never been asked if I had a degree in web development or design in all the years I've been doing these things, especially as a contractor. They don't care. They want to look at your, your website. They want to see what you've done. They want to see your portfolio. So how do you get clients? Well, you look, you know, steps three, four, and five. When you start doing freebie stuff and you start putting up your site, you're going to see word of mouth is going to be a big part of it. You will start getting clients in time. I've seen this countless times. Number eight, this will help you get clients. Uh, join a form as quickly as you can and contribute questions and answers. This will uh, first help you to develop your skills and it will, you'll start developing a reputation. I, I can't tell you how many people have gone to the Killer Sites forums, for instance. You can go to any forum, any web designer forum you want, and they're, they're asking questions, answering questions, asking. They become known in the community and eventually somebody said, hey, can you help me with this project? Can you help me with that? It's, it's very common. So again, you just got to start building that reputation. Uh, number nine, continue to learn technology and keep up to date. That's the, uh, the thing about web development. If you want to keep earning top dollars and, and, and you want to you get the maximum amount of jobs, you have to be open to learning new stuff. It's not going to be a constant thing, but you got to, you know, once you get your, your, you know, get into it and you know what you're doing, you got to keep your eye, you know, on what's going on out there. And, you know, look around and start learning new things here and there because you may catch the next you know, wave and they will come, new technologies come in. If you catch it early, you can make a lot of money, do really well by catching it early on and being one of the few experts in that particular area. I've seen it again, I've seen it several times. This is how it works. So um, I'm going to end with a little uh, shameless self promotion. Number two, if you want to learn how to do all these things in detail, I have my web developer from scratch package. You click on it here, it takes you here, web developer from scratch. 63 and 40, 63 hours, 42 minutes. It covers everything, basic web design, HTML, CSS3, jQuery, Dreamweaver, CS6, CSS layout, CSS Lisp, Photoshop for the web, how to prepare images for the web, HTML forms. Uh, you get the idea, PHP, MySQL, PHP, shopping cart, beginner's JavaScript, beginner's jQuery, PHP CRUD pageant. Anyway, 60 odd hours of training uh, when you get a course from us, when you get a course from me, you basically have access to it for life. You download it, and if you lose something, you can come back a year later, two years later, re-download it. If we update a part of the web developer from scratch package, let's say we update the shopping cart tutorial because the technology has changed, you can come and download that as well. No problemo. And uh, that's it. You have a question? Give me a call, 1-855-932-8091. This is in North America, uh, sorry, Europe. You can always reach me by email, of course. Anyway, that's it. That's how you become a web developer. Uh, this PDF will be available at the Killer Video Store as well for you to download as a reference. Thanks for watching.